ஹலோ எவ்ரி ஒன் வெல்கம் டு தி டென்த் வீடியோ ஆன் தி ஸ்னோ ப்ரோ கோர் சர்டிஃபிகேஷன் சீரீஸ் இன் திஸ் வீடியோ வி ஆர் கோயிங் டு டிஸ்கஸ் அபவுட் ஆக்சஸ் கண்ட்ரோல்ஸ் வித் இன் ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஆக்சஸ் கண்ட்ரோல்ஸ் இஸ் அன் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் டாபிக் ஃப்ரம் தி அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்டிங் அண்ட் ஆல்சோ ஃப்ரம் தி எக்ஸாம் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ வி நீட் டு அண்டர்ஸ்டாண்ட் வாட் ஆர் ஆல் தி வேரியஸ் டிஃப்ரெண்ட் ஆக்சஸ் மெத்தட்ஸ் விச் ஆர் அவைலபிள் வித் இன் தி ஸ்னோ ஃப்ளேக் ஸோ தட் வீ கேன் கிராண்ட் வி கேன் ரிவோக் வி கேன் கிவ் தி ரெஸ்பெக்டிவ் ஆக்சஸ் ப்ரிவிலேஜஸ் டு யூசர்ஸ் அண்ட் ரோல்ஸ் விதவுட் ஃபர்தர் அடியூ லெட்ஸ் டைவ் டீப் இன் டு இட் first to understand the access control we need to understand some of the basic concepts within snowflake the first thing is the discretionary access control in which each object has a owner who can in turn grant the access to that object the second one is the role based access control where access privileges are assigned to roles which are in turn assigned to users to understand it in a more clear way please look into this diagram this is all about the discretionary access control or dac where the object 1 is owned by role 1 role 1 is the owner of object 1 that role 1 grant the access to role 2 so that role 2 can access the object 1 here you can see the statement as simple as it is role 1 is the owner to table 1 so what role 1 can do grant select on table 1 to role 2 so role 2 will get the select access on the table 1 moving on to the r back which is the role based access control here the privileges are granted to role then the roles will be granted to the users to understand this see this sql statement grant select on table 1 to role 1 and then grant role 1 to user 1 as simple as it is what is the major difference here here owner is directly granting the access here the privileges are granted via the roles alone this is having lot of advantages say you can group the users into one specific role and then you can grant the access to that specific role alone instead of granting each and every access to the user you can group it under one role and for that role alone we can grant the access and there are some other important things which we need to know as the snowflake access control point of view securable objects a securable object is an entity to which the access can be granted unless allowed by a grant access is denied some of the examples of securable objects are tables views stored procedures functions everything role as we already discussed role is an entity to which the privileges can be granted roles are in turn assigned to users note that the roles can also be assigned to other users by creating a role hierarchy we are going to discuss more in detail about the role hierarchy in the subsequent places privilege privilege is a defined level of access to an object in this case if you see select is the privilege multiple distinct privileges may be used to control the granularity of the access granted another example is grant usage on database db1 to role uh, role 1 here the usage is the privilege similarly select modify monitor all these things are the privileges which we can grant user is the known entity which is known to all of us user is an entity which is the recognized by snowflake whether associated with a person or with a program now we are going to discuss about some other important things which are very much required to understand the access control one thing is the role we already saw what role is but roles are the entities to which the privileges on the securable objects can be granted or revoked which is self explainable roles are assigned to users to allow them to perform actions required for the business functions in their organization again self explainable users can be assigned with multiple roles important thing to know please remember we can assign multiple roles to a specific user roles can also be granted to other roles which will create the role hierarchy the same point which we discussed earlier as well now see this picture this is very important role 3 is having a privilege c now 
what we are going to do we are assigning the role 3 to role 2 so by default the privilege c is inherited to role 2 along with that the privilege b is specific to role 2 then we are assigning the role 2 to role 1 so automatically by default privilege b and c got inherited privilege a is the specific privilege for role 1 finally we will be assigning the role 1 to user 1 so user 1 will be having all the three privileges which is privilege A, privilege B and privilege C. So, this is the role hierarchy which is very very important for our understanding. So, the privileges associated with the role are inherited by any roles above that role in the hierarchy that is what which we discussed. A role owner that is the role that has the ownership privilege on the role does not inherit the privileges of the owned role. Please try to understand that privilege inheritance is only possible within the role hierarchy. Very important thing to remember. There are four different role types, account roles, database roles, instance roles and application roles. Again self-explainable, account roles will permit SQL actions to any object in your account. Database roles will permit SQL actions to single database as well as any object in the database. Grant privileges on the object to the database role are in the same database. So, database roles is all about the single database access meaning whatever the objects within the database are included. Instance roles will permit you to access to an instance of a class, grant the instance role to the account role. Finally, there is something called application role. This is very helpful if you are defining or creating an application within the snowflake. So, by doing so, say a simple example is a streamlit app. To enable the customer access to the objects in the snowflake native app, the provider creates the application role and grants the privileges to the application role in the setup script as simple as it is. So, these are all the four different role types. Here if you can see there are some statements which I added for our better understanding. Grant select on all tables in schema db2 dot db2 underscore schema 2. Here db2 is the database name and db2 underscore schema 2 is the schema name to role db1 underscore schema 1 underscore read only. What this will do it will grant the select access on all all the tables within this schema to this role as simple as it is select meaning what read only access you will be having the permission to read the data alone you cannot have any permission to write the data into the specific schema meaning the tables which are inside the schema now this is another interesting feature which is called as the future grants so you can same statement instead of all tables there is a mention of future tables you can grant the the future grants to the objects within the schema. What this does, say a table or a view which is going to be created in future under the schema, by default the access to those specific objects is granted to this specific role. So, future grants is also possible within Snowflake. Now, we are going to discuss about securable objects. We already saw this to some extent. Securable object is nothing but the objects which are secured within the snowflake. This is the diagram which we already saw as the part of our previous videos. Here the bottom portion of it, whatever which is mentioned under the schema, say table, view, stage, store procedure, user defined functions or other schema objects are the ones which are securable. Securable meaning what? We can grant specific access to those specific objects. So, securable objects such as table, views, functions and stages are contained in the schema object which are in turn contained in the database. All databases from your Snowflake account are contained in the account object. That is something which is very important to know. 
now to own an object meaning the role has the ownership privilege on the object this we saw to a very greater detail on the dac discretionary access control so object is owned by a owner that is mentioned as the ownership privilege on the object each securable object is owned by a single role very important thing by which the default is the role used to create the object meaning what using which role you are creating an object that role will have the complete ownership privilege on that specific object now comes the interesting part you can grant the ownership command lets you transfer the ownership of an object to another role so that possibility is also there sir so using one role you created some object by doing so that role is having the ownership privilege using that same role you can grant the ownership privilege to some other role as well now moving on to two different types of schema one is the regular schema and other one is the managed access schema let's see what is the difference regular schema is the one which has the owner role has all privileges on the object by default including the ability to grant or revoke privileges on the object to other roles that is very simple regular schema meaning what object object owners is going to have the complete power when it comes to the managed access schema object owners lose the ability to grant the permissions only the schema owner is going to have the complete permissions to grant the access simple difference please try to understand managed access is all about schema owner regular schema is all about object owner now this is simple we need to understand the ability to perform sql options on the object which is defined by the privileges granted to the active role in a user session in the specific user session these are all the privileges which will be granted to active role what are all the privileges ability to create a warehouse ability to list the tables contained in the schema and the ability to add the data to a table now we are going to discuss about access control in snowflake as we already saw major things like roles securable objects and also d dac and r back now we are seeing how snowflake is going to provide us snowflake approach to access control combines the aspects of both dac and r back important thing to note it is combining both dac and r back access to securable objects is allowed via privileges assigned to roles which are in turn assigned to users and to other roles we saw to a greater extent about these details each securable object has a owner that can grant access to other roles again which is self explainable and we saw it in a greater detail this model is different from the user based access control model which gives the rights and privileges are assigned to each every user to the group of users what they are trying to say user based access control is all about granting the individual privilege to each and every user that is a cumbersome process to do to overcome that this role based access control will be very very beneficial why because we can directly grant the access to the role alone and then we can just simply attach that role to the specific user so the user can inherit all the required privileges so that is the difference what they are trying to make so these pictures are very evident we saw a greater detail about this role hierarchy picture in the earlier place as well so now we are going to see this picture alone let us try to understand this picture in a clear way here you can see role 1 is having the owner rights to object 1 and object 2 now the role 1 is granting the access for object 1 alone to role 2 now you can see privilege and privilege both of them are different privileges but both the privileges are granted to role 2 and here if you can see the object 2 privilege and then the object 1 the other privilege is granted to role 3 
now this role 2 is granted to user 1 so what the user 1 is going to have access only to object 1 not to this object 2 so the role inheritance must have to come into play user 1 is having role 2 role 2 is having the privilege only to object 1 and two privileges are there but only to the object 1 now the user 2 is granted with both the roles role 2 and role 3 so obviously the user 2 will be having the complete all the three privileges meaning both the privileges on object 1 and the privilege on object 2 so all the three privileges will be granted to user 2 via role 2 and role 3 now comes to the role 4 role 4 again is going to have access to both object 1 and object 2 but not the first privilege of object 1 the second privilege of object 1 and the privilege of object 2 is granted via the role 3 so this is how we need to interpret this complete picture understanding of this picture is very very important from the exam point of view other way around we are just trying to represent the role hierarchy how the roles are getting inherited from the other roles via this diagram now we are going to discuss about system defined roles within snowflake there are some six different system defined roles within snowflake which cannot be modified which cannot be deleted by any of the users that is very important thing to know why so why snowflake is creating this in any of the system we need a super privilege or an high privileged roles which needs to be granted to some of the users so that that people can do it for example a database administrator a snowflake database administrator must be granted with the super privilege so that the dba can do some of the high privileged actions say like i want to create a snowflake account say like i want to create users i want to grant access to the specific users i want to create roles so all these things are the super privileged things which we cannot grant it to multiple of people for that reason all these system defined roles are created starting with the org admin org admin the name itself is very evident org admin is all about granting the access at the organization level it will this is the role that manages operations at the organization level creates accounts in the organization view all accounts within the organization and view usage information across the organization so whatever at the organization level which is the top in the hierarchy is possible using org admin next comes the account admin role that encapsulate sysadmin and security admin system defined roles we are going just wait for a second we are going to discuss about it in a greater detail top level role in the system should be granted to limited or controlled number of users in your account that is very very important thing to remember security admin this is the role which is mainly for managing the grant security privilege and able to modify any grant including the revoking so this is mainly for granting the access globally as well as create monitor and manage users and roles user admin this is the role which is mainly for user creation and role creation this is dedicated for user and role management only sysadmin on the other hand is all about warehouses and databases which has the privileges to create the data virtual warehouses and also the databases in an account you can create a role hierarchy that ultimately assigns all custom roles to the sysadmin role this role can also grant privileges on the warehouses databases and other objects to other roles as simple as it is as you see sysadmin is all about databases and warehouses user admin and security admin is all about roles users and everything account admin is the top one org admin is all about organization level finally there comes the public public is public as simple as it is it is available to all the users whatever which you create within your account under the public schema will be available to all the users within that specific account that is the reason why it is there it is the pseudo role that automatically grants to every user whenever a user got created this public is automatically granted to that role so that whatever the objects which are available under the public schema will be accessed by any user within that specific account 
so here is an extracted juice which is very very important for you to understand from the exam point of view and also for your easy understanding what is the extracted juice please go through these pictures this will be very very helpful first let us see about the right side picture and then we can see about this left side picture here you can see the database role there is one database role which is assigned to other database role which is assigned to a custom role and that custom role is assigned to another custom role another custom role everything so as we discussed in the earlier thing the sysadmin is the role which will encapsulate all the custom roles whatever the custom roles which is defined all the custom roles is contained within the sysadmin meaning sysadmin is the super privileged role which we already discussed like creating the warehouses and databases all the custom roles are mapped to sysadmin in the left side if you see you user admin is mapped to security admin meaning what whatever the activities or the privileges which user admin can do will be inherited by the security admin along with the user admin stuff the another important thing is the manage grants and then if you see both security admin and the sys admin is granted to account admin that is the reason why we are telling account admin is the most privileged role within the snowflake so bottom up meaning whatever available in the top side will be inheriting all the roles you can see public is at the bottom that will be granted to each and everything coming to this picture this is an interesting picture which is very very easy for you to understand here the same thing right say public is having no inherent privileges now comes sysadmin what sysadmin does sysadmin mainly does create database and create warehouse that is automatically linked to account admin in this side you can see user admin will be giving you the rights to create a role and user that user admin will be provided by default to security admin along with this privilege ledges security admin is having the manage grants as the extra thing that is again granted to account admin which forms account admin as the key leader leader meaning all the roles whatever the access which you need is there in account admin so this is very very important from the exam point of view before concluding this video let us see an simple example on how this is happening so you can see here Here, user one and user two. These are all the two users which needs access to the schema one, which is under the database one. If you can see under the database one, the schema one is there. Within the schema one, we are having table one and table two. Within schema two, we are having table three. Now the data analyst. These users are part of the data analyst function or group. needs the usage access on the schema 1 and select access on the table 1 so i hope you understand this requirement properly now how we can implement this the steps are as simple first using the user admin role we will be creating a role role of a data analyst is created and then using user admin role we are creating the user here we are creating the user 1 and user 2 with the password abc123 and must change password equal to true so it will prompt the user to change the password on the first successful attempt now we created the role we created the specific users now you using the sys admin we are granting the role of data analyst to user 1 and user 2 and then we are granting the usage on schema 1 to the role of data analyst as simple as it is then i am just using the use commands use database and use schema to put our prompt into that specific object hierarchy so by doing so we will be by default into the schema 1 and then we will be granting select on table one role to data analyst by doing so the complete requirement will be satisfied so please do remember future grants is always possible this is done using grant future future grants on the specific schema which we saw as the part of the previous stuff now before concluding the video i just wanted to take you through the snowflake documentation as usual i am going to provide the link for this documentation in the description of this video please glimpse through that 
whatever which we discussed in this video is available here most of the contents i had already covered as the part of our video but for your information please go through that with this we come to end of this video i hope this video has been informative for you please do write lot of comments that will be very very helpful for me with respect to creating some of the good contents for your future reference thank you very much for watching this video